like things I think about. I was thinking about my dad. And I was thinking, wow, I look just exactly like my dad. And I really hate that. Because I hate my dad. <laughs> but you know, it's really glad that I know where I come from. I'm glad that my mother just wasn't out drunk one night, slutting it up, and had me. It's good to know that when I was conceived, that both my parents were drunk. <laughs> and I know they had to be drunk, because in order to stand each other at all, they both had to be shoe-faced, <laughs> let alone have sex and have me. <laughs> He knows, he waits. Uh, you know, when I was in high school, though, I was diagnosed with severe chemical depression. Later on in life, I found out it was actually called two alcoholic parents. As you, as you can tell, I came from a very strange family. Now, my brother, he took on my mother's fashion sense. <laughs> and became a cross-dresser. <laughs> I took on my mother's emotional sense and became a suicidal, alcoholic, lesbian drug addict. <laughs> They can relate. It's good to know we so many people in Alaska. They can relate to that stuff. You know, kind of an emotional cross-dresser, you know? An emotional drag queen. And because of that, I have something in my life that's kind of disturbing and kind of wonderful. I call it ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Rotation. That's when all my girlfriends come back to me. One at a time. Could be a text, could be a call. They can show up at my door with two suitcases. 
and their son and say, let's try for a daughter. It happens. It does. And the thing is, what happens is when they, when they show up again, it could be, you know, a couple months, a couple weeks. You have a really good time for a while, you know? But eventually, we have that little argument where we remember why this shit is never, ever, ever, ever gonna work out! And we kind of go, oh! I remember why our love is doomed. <laughs> but recently, I fell in love with a girl. And she didn't want my love. And that was very painful to me. Because I think I have a very strong love. A very strong, suicidal, alcoholic, <laughs> lesbian, drug addict love. Yeah. Emotional cross-dresser love, you know? It was very painful to me, to me. And you know, the thing about my parents is I put them down a lot. But you know what? From my parents, I learned about true love. Because true love is when you finally meet someone whose parents fucked them up <laughs> the same way that your parents fucked you up. <laughs> Thank you. And then you have matching neuroses. <laughs> and then you have some kids. <laughs> You fucking poor liars. <laughs> the same way that dear old mom and dad fucked up your life. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Got lots of people in waiting up here in Alaska. That's good. I know I'm at home here in Alaska. And you know, because you always want that. You always want that 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 connection because there's nothing worse than two parents arguing over. How the hell are we going to fuck up our kids' lives, you know? It's like, you don't even care about fucking up our kids' lives! <laughs> I'm the one that has to go to the little and take my pants off and punch the referee! You don't even care! You don't even show up! To fuck up our kids' lives! It's me! I have to stage dive to make it at the high school or elementary school play. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, the thing is, too, the thing that's really hard about ex girlfriend rotation is sometimes they just come back for one night because maybe they broke up with their boyfriend. And they figure it's not a real breakup until they fuck somebody else. So most guys would like that, you know? But not me, because I'm a suicidal alcoholic. <laughs> and I was thinking we were gonna have a relationship. <laughs> But I was just, you know, just the breakup sex or, or whatever, you know? Or just a little fun because they were bored, you know? That, well, Mark, yeah, yeah. sex wasn't that bad. It's so I go back to him, you know? It's a compliment. <laughs> now, because of all this, I'm a really, really bad, passive aggressive non communicator, you know? It's like the people. 
that I'm not talking to haven't got the foggiest idea what the fuck I am not saying to them. <laughs> and that's really irritating, you know? You're like, we're not talking to someone for months. And they don't even know why. It just pisses me off so much. I wish I could do that better. <laughs> anyway, so enough about my mother. <laughs> Have you guys heard about the fake news? Yeah. yeah. All the time. All the news. I read this fake news story the other day on the internet that Donald Trump is the president of the United States. <laughs> Can you believe that shit? It's like they will put anything on the internet and people won't believe it. Are you guys ready for eight years of Trump jokes? Yeah! Trump supporters out there. You know, but the thing is, I am actually really sad and then Hillary lost the election. Because I had to retire all my Hillary jokes. And those are some good jokes. But we can't, we can't take her while she's down, though. She lost the election. We have to stop, don't we, with the Hillary joke? No. 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 Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's take Hillary while she's down. So, uh, well, I did hear that Hillary may uh, have had to drop out of the presidential race, even if she won. Because I heard that the doctors found a brain tumor during her last vaginal examination. <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes I'm told that some of my jokes can be offensive to the ladies. I'm really sorry about that, it really does hurt me inside. It's very disappointing to me. Because I really want my comedy to be offensive to everyone. You know, WikiLeaks was really hard on Hillary. WikiLeaks was very, very hard on Hillary. You know, they, they, she, they tried to censor a movie, she did. Remember that movie Jurassic Land? where they were genetically engineering the dinosaurs. She had a scene taken out of that. There was a dinosaur in there, evidently, that was offensive to her. And the scientific name for this dinosaur was the Hilaracetus Dinosaurus Geriatricus. It's a very strange dinosaur. It was the only dinosaur in the movie wearing a pantsuit. Most dinosaurs are made for life, but this species would chase away its mate, the Dilosaurus, <laughs> after the children were brown, by brandishing her sharp, sharp teeth. Added the sharp teeth she had on her vagina. <laughs> That's the Hilaracetus Dinosaurus. Geriatricus Vagisaurus. Vagisaurus. So anyway, back to eight years of Trump jokes. What do you call a prostitute that farts really loud while she's having sex with Donald Trump? Way back. A trumpet. <laughs> Thank you. That's a wind instrument, a trumpet. Makes kind of a harsh noise. It also sounds like strumpet. You know, which is Victorian era term for a loose woman. Have the footman. Remove that strumpet from my premises. Sometimes I have to explain my jokes, you know? 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, I am worried that Trump is president now because he says he's finally going to destroy Al Qaeda and ISIS. In fact, he dropped that big bomb. And that really scares me because these guys are trying to recruit me online. <laughs> because they heard I'm bombing all over town. <laughs> That's what they heard. So anyway, there was a female reporter the other day. She asked Donald Trump if he was a misogynist. Did you see that on television? All the feminists were talking about that. And he said, sure. I feel fantastic massages. <laughs> Just come by the White House any time. <laughs> My wife's not even moving into the White House. <laughs> We're safe. Don't let these small hands fool you. <laughs> I give incredible massages. <laughs> We're gonna grab this massage by the pussy. <laughs> But you know, Donald Trump uh, is going to build a wall. And, you know, I think if he's going to build a wall, I should be like him. I should be a good, good capitalist. And I should make money off of it. So I decided to open up a store that sells only walls. And I did a lot of research to try to figure out what I should call this store. I'm going to call it Wall Mart. <laughs> where America shops. <laughs> but I hear that, that Donald Trump actually is going to try to make a profit on the wall. There's a little bit of a change in it recently. He decided instead of building a wall, he's going to build a really tall, thin hotel <laughs> along the border. <laughs> that way when they come crawling across the desert, we finally get to the door and we'll look up and they'll see a big neon sign. They'll say Trump. Then we will have to pay to stay there. Right? And make money out of it. For the people that don't have money, he can hire them to work there. And use the money from the people that pay to pay for the people that are working there. Isn't that beautiful? And then the people on the other side trying to keep out the Mexicans, the militia members, he can charge them money also. So he can make money off of both sides of the border. Wouldn't that be fantastic? That way he can just solve the problem and no one has to pay for it, you know? Just have a little economy along the border and everything's fine. Are you guys going to build a wall to keep the Canadians out? Over there? Yeah, make those Canadians, those goddamn Canadians. Keep coming out of here, causing all those problems. What do Canadians do that's your kid out here? They make fries. Huh? Mix their Canadian in the dark. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I'm, I'm all for making profits off of both sides of the border. You know, our both sides of the issue too, you know. I try to make I try to make a profit off of both sides of the issue once. Remember the Confederate flag kerfluffle? Remember that? They're trying to ban the Confederate flag because they said it's racist. So what I did is I made two products so I could sell it to both sides. So for the people that don't like the Confederate flag, I made some Confederate flag toilet paper. <laughs> and sell it online. So you can take it out of the Confederate flag. <laughs> you racist look what I'm doing to your flag. You can Instagram it, flush it. <laughs> and then for the people that like the Confederate flag, I made some Confederate flag condoms. <laughs> And on it, I put the old cliche, the South is going to rise again. 
but you gotta make money off of those cliches. <laughs> that way, I can make money off of them and secretly keep them from reproducing. <laughs> You know, uh, libertarians were kind of worried about Trump, that he was going to be causing wars and stuff like that. And uh, it did, he named his first battleship the other day. And uh, their, their, their fears were not assuaged at all. And he named it the USS Unconstitutional. <laughs> yeah, people here in the Navy. You know, uh, also, the other day when I got here in my, you know, my hotel room, when I first arrived here, I had really bad gas. I mean, just horrible gas. The worst gas I've ever had. I didn't know what they fed me on the airplane. But it was so bad, I was worried that Donald Trump was going to bomb my hotel room. <laughs> Chemical warfare. <laughs> we call it an airstrike. I guess you'd find out if it was a secondary explosion, if you could actually could actually light your farts. <laughs> you see, do I have any more Trump jokes? <laughs> do I have any more? Let's see. Trump bad. Well, gas is in. Oh, oh yeah. Did you guys see the Trump statue? Oh, yeah. yeah. The naked Trump statue? Sold for $20,000 just before the election. You know, I was looking at it and I was thinking, wow, Hillary probably looks about the same. But with a much bigger dick. Hillary's big old dick. One more time. Say it one more time. Hillary's here. There's no applause for Hillary's dick. Come on. <laughs> but you know, back to my family. It doesn't take long until you go back to that, you know? I was, you know, my dad, I talk about my mom a lot. I gotta talk about my dad. My dad was a grumpy German man who was drunk all the time. I guess that made him a sour crunch. <laughs> I said it. But he was a very strange man. He was a very dark man. He used to bury me in the yard, in the dirt. So I grew up big and strong. He was a kindergartner. What? I really said it. What? Sometimes I get a bigger laugh when I take a rock star pose. When I say the punchline. A kindergartner! Bigger laugh sometimes. I was very confused about my heritage and my genes when I was little, especially because I heard on television that you could tell what you're going to look like by looking in your genes. <laughs> now I was nine. <laughs> So I took off my pants <laughs> and I started and I started looking in my jeans <laughs> like a scientist. And I said, wow, I wonder if this means I'm gonna have a shitty life. <laughs> I did, I did have a shitty life. But it's good. You can't tell me what your life is going to be like by looking in your jeans. 
which for me anyway, but I didn't know that then, so I went and asked my mom. My mom was on her third martini of the morning. <laughs> and that's when I found out that I'm half Irish, half German, and have great genes for alcoholism. <laughs>